By the time you hear this, this evening, uh, as opposed to the time I'm recording it, uh, there's no way of guessing how much death and destruction the, uh, this, 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 I don't know how to explain the Russian military. I, what they are doing in Ukraine and what they did in, in Syria, I didn't pay that much attention to what happened in Syria. I didn't. But apparently in Syria, the same Russian military was vicious, vile, uh, just unspeakably, insanely destructive. And now they're doing it in Ukraine. They're doing it to people who look like them, talk like them, eat the same food, belong to the same religion, live in the same region. It would be like the United States attacking and murdering Canadians. Something horrific has happened to the Russian people. And it's been a long time coming. Uh, There's no doubt. Because I understand, even though very few people who who were polled would probably tell the truth, but I understand that Putin's popularity rating has gone up since this murderous fuck has decided to start killing people, killing his neighbors, killing his neighbors. That's the thing that is so insane. Ukrainians speak Russian. Russians speak Ukrainian in in the areas close to the border. And again, they are the same, genetically speaking, the same people. Their their nationalities are different, but but what the hell does nationality mean? So, this offensive that these vile, horrible Russian troops have initiated in eastern Ukraine could reshape this entire war. The uh, the U.S. Pentagon estimated that Moscow has added thousands of troops in Ukraine in recent days. And, and there's a reason for that, of course. Because word got back to Putin that his vicious troops were being slaughtered, were being cut down like, like so much wheat that used to grow in Ukraine before this invasion. So how do you... How do you deal with that? You don't sue for peace. You just bring in more troops if you're a sick fuck like Vladimir Putin. So Russia declared early today that it's offensive for control of of what is Ukraine's industrial heartland was underway. And with that announcement, these monsters began the bombardment of targets in cities across the Eastern Front. Um, The Russian foreign minister, the one that used to laugh and joke and carry on with Vladimir, uh, I'm sorry, with the same guy, with with Donald Trump in the Oval Office. Remember those pictures of uh, of Sergei Lavrov, that rotund, gruesome son of a bitch laughing and joking while Trump is laughing and joking. Another rotund, gruesome son of a bitch. My God, these people, Trump and Putin, they're interchangeable. But there was Sir, uh, Sergei Lavrov with an announcement. Quote, another phase of this operation is starting now. And he said that as Russian missiles and artillery uh, forces had struck hundreds of Ukrainian targets overnight. The strikes uh, were targeted to uh, areas of, of the Ukraine region known as the Donbas, but also in the southern region of, I, I guess it's pronounced Mikolaev. Mikolaev. Russia said that they are on the way to the Black Sea port of Odessa. And the Times reports this. The Pentagon estimated that Russia has already sent 11 more battalion tactical groups into Ukraine. Additional forces likely to comprise eight to 11,000 soldiers. It is also tens of thousands more in reserve north of Ukraine who are being resupplied and ready to join the fight. 
Jesus Christ. Ukraine said it had repulsed, as of this morning, seven different Russian thrusts into their country, destroying 10 tanks, 18 armored units in the battles. Um, and, and then there's this, uh, the, is in terms of military tactics, which I, I, I hate to get into because it's about death and destruction. But Ukrainian and U.S. officials said Russian forces appeared to be engaged in something called shaping operations. Shaping operations. Apparently, those are smaller attacks that are often precursors to larger troop movements. Or as they, they serve as a distraction to an opposing military force. Look what we're doing over here while they attack someplace else. Um, and Ukrainian and U.S. officials said this particular campaign that the Russians have launched now is likely to be much more methodical than what the Russians tried. The so-called deep raids and rapid advancements when the Russians were just butchered. Um, what else does it say? Yeah, more people are trapped in Ukraine because the Russian forces are pounding Ukrainian targets with missiles and, and artillery along uh, much of the 300-mile uh, uh, front line where the, this battle is now raging. This is the third day in a row that Ukrainian government said that fighting in the east made it impossible to evacuate civilians, which has left hundreds of thousands of civilians trapped. And, and the Russians don't care. The, the Russians just don't fucking care. Uh, uh, why doesn't someone remind them of, of how the citizens of the cities in Russia fought with everything they had to successfully, along with the weather, stop the Nazi, Nazi advancement into Russia? Hitler's plan was to just knock out the Russian military, but the Russian people said, fuck you, and fought tooth and nail and suffered 20, 30,000 dead. The Russians did. And now they're doing it to the Ukrainians. I, this, is, this is insanity. President Zelensky said in a speech last night, quote, a very large part of the entire Russian army is now focused on this offensive, and then he added, quote, no matter how many Russian soldiers are driven here, we will fight. Oh, man. It, it, I, I, it, I, I hate. I hate talking about it. I hate hearing about it. I hate seeing the videos. I hate seeing the pictures. There was a big I think in the Washington Post this morning online, a whole collection of photos that are just horrifying, but they're the kind of photos that people should see because they represent war, period. They're not representational where it concerns Ukraine. They are, they are actual deaths of people being blown to pieces in destruction. But in another sense, and, and I'm not trying to play off of the horror going on in Ukraine, but in another sense, they're representational of what war does. We haven't learned yet, have we? Christ. And then, it, uh, this, 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 this kind of shocked me. I'm about to share with you. you uh, share with you. you. You know how I frequently ask for financial support to keep this podcast going, right? Well, now there is a campaign from the Ukrainians. It's an appeal to the world's ultra rich, you know, the billionaires. And the appeal is, in, in five words, buy me a fighter jet. Good God. So this campaign is asking the world's wealthiest people for help in defending their country from these Russian monsters. 
buy me a fighter jet. And the reason they're doing this, uh, the, the, the Ukrainians behind this say that governments, including the United States, governments around the world are, quote, afraid of escalation and the conflict spreading beyond Ukraine, end quote, and therefore won't send the jets, won't impose the no-fly zone. And, and both of those requests, demands, have come from President Volodymyr Zelensky. Repeatedly, he's tried to get NATO and the United States to do one or both. If you don't want to set up a no-fly zone, then for Christ's sake, give us what we need to fight our own fight. But NATO and the United States, for whatever reason, and, and I know they have reasons that uh, my adult brain can't figure out, because I, I, you know my position. My position was, okay, first it was, okay, set up the no-fly zone. And then when I was convinced, okay, might not be a good idea, then provide the Ukrainians with the equipment they need. They'll set up their own fly, no-fly zone. Poland jumped in right away. Hey, we have 29, or, or however many it was, of these MiG jets. We'll be more than happy to give them to Ukraine. There's a video that has been uh, shared online. I haven't seen it yet, but an unidentified man appears, uh, who, who appears to be a pilot. He is calling on people from all backgrounds, including singers and actors and business owners, to help the people of Ukraine who cannot, under the current or the present circumstances, compete with the air power of Russian, uh, the Russian forces. A statement on the website, it's buymeafighterjet.com. Buymeafighterjet.com. Jesus Christ. But one of the statements there says, quote, we ask you, philanthropists, to use your financial, organizational, and political capabilities to buy and hand over a fighter jet to us. One plane can save thousands of innocent lives, end quote. This is what it's come down to? The Ukrainians are not doing a goddamn podcast. They are struggling for their survival. And now they're asking the planet's hundreds of thousands of billionaires, please fucking do this for us. These jets cost about $25 million each. That's what a bunch of rich bastards paid to go for a joyride up to the International Space Station a couple of weeks ago. 25 million bucks. Where's Elon Musk? Where's Bill Gates? Where's Jeff Bezos? And those are billionaires. And, and where, where are the Chinese billionaires? And the Israeli billionaires? And the British billionaires? Where are you? Where the fuck are you? Do this. Yeah. Sure they will. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.